Hello everybody, my name is Sam from Code Bundle, and today, as you can probably tell from my desktop, I'm going to be going over a programming language called NASM. So NASM is short for Netwide Assembler, and an assembler is the compiler you use to compile assembly language. Now, assembly language is the second hardest programming form next to straight up writing in machine code. However, I feel that there's a certain elegance and efficiency in the way assembly languages, specifically netwide assembly, is structured that makes it worthy of learning. So, things you're going to need. Well, first of all, you're going to need NASM. So, you can get this either by loading up a web browser and going to www.nasm.us. That'll take you straight to the netwide assemblers. Uh, homepage where you can get downloads and relevant things or if you are on an Ubuntu or Debian based app you can run apt-get install NASM. You're also going to need a text editor for which I recommend either Citee which is uh, apt-get install Citee or Vim, apt-get install Vim. In this tutorial series I'll be using Vim which is a terminal based text editor. I may go into how you use this text editor at a later date but it is very complicated. So, let's get a basic text file set up. We will call this hello world.asm. I'll put this just here. Okay, so hello world.asm. Okay, well, you can see it here on my desktop from the terminal view hello world.asm. I'm just going to load this up in Vim. So, first of all I'm going to explain how you structure an assembly program before I actually go into the bulk of the programming. So an assembly program is structured in three sections. There is the .data section, which is used to store constant information and anything you want to replace at compile time, so your standard constants concept. Then you've got the .bss, which is a uh, fancy name is uninitialized data, but it's effectively variables. And if you don't know about them, you should probably not be on this video and learn a different programming language first. There in, then there, and there is the text section, which is the actual code you're going to use. So you set up each one of these with the Uh, da, 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 da. you set up each one of these with the command section at the start of it. So section.data, section.bss and section.text. Before I go any further I'm just going to set my syntax to nasm and set number. Okay so now I've got some line numbers as well to work with. So for the hello world program we have to think of what we need. Well first we need the actual text hello world so we're gonna put this as it's a piece of constant data in the data section so we are going to first set up a label and this is the label we use everywhere else in the program to reference this section of the code and I'm just gonna use MSG so MSG is gonna be short for mess message and I'm gonna set this up as our, my constant using MSG colon so after this I uh, can tab in or I can just do it right there, doesn't really matter and I'm going to use the command db. Now db which Vim has wonderfully highlighted in green stands for define byte. This allows us to define a piece of information. The piece of information we want to define is hello world. So is there any other information we're going to need? Well in a higher level programming language probably not. But, because this is such a low-level programming language, all this has done is set up a part of our program's binary file where that is stored. We can reference that when we decide to print, but all that will do is reference where the character H is. And just referencing the character H isn't very useful, as we're going to be wanting to print everything out here. Which means we also need to know the length of this. This is going to let me teach you about another concept, which are, is the EQ way of setting things up. Now, EQ will go through and 
replace any occurrence of your label, which in this case I'm using msgl for message length, and replace it. Some more concepts it could be useful for you to know. The dollar sign symbol simply means the start of this label, which means this will be msgl. We then subtract from that the location msg. So that will get us the length of message. We could just write down 12, but then we have to go through and change it every single time we make an edit to this. Whereas with this we could add whatever the hell we want in here and it will automatically update it. Do we need any variables for this? Not really, so I'm going to go ahead and scrap this section altogether. Okay, now I'm going to go through the setup process for setting up the section.txt. First up we have to set up where the program is going to start. We do this with global underscore start colon. Then we go to our setup, our label for start, and the program will now run from here. So assembly language interfaces directly with your kernel. And you can look up the kernel system calls online, and I'll probably have a link for it in the description. But the one we're interested in is 4. Now, the fourth system call is system write. This allows you to write a piece of information. So, the command mov will move a piece of information into a register. Now, we want to move into the register eax. Now, the register eax is where we store the system call we're going to be running. So, we want to put 4 in eax. The next one, quite logically, is ebx. Now, with system write as our process, we need to put into ebx where we want to write it out to. Now, we want to write it into the standard output, which is just the terminal, so we're going to use mov ebx1 for standard output. So, ecx then contains the label that is linking to the letter h here, which is msg. It just so happens we have to find stuff after that and edx, you've probably already guessed it, needs the length. But now we've set this all up, in order to actually trigger it we have to do some, call the kernel. We call the kernel using int 80h. Now you think that this program might be done, but if we run the program at its current point it's just going to segmentation fault. We have to tell the program to end. Now, in order to end the program, we need another system call, and this is the first one, which is system exit. With system exit, in ebx, we have to store the error. If it's reached this point in the code, there should be no errors, so we'll put zero in there. ecx and edx don't matter with sysexit, so then I'm just going to go ahead and call the kernel. Okay, so I've just written to that file, and if I were to open it with Citee, which is the, my other recommended editor, you can see it's all here. So now I'm going to compile this. We do this with nasm hyphen f e l f hello world dot asm. Now this has created the hello world dot o document that you can see in the top corner of my screen. I'll ls so you can see it there. Now then we need to link it. We do this with ld hyphen s hyphen o hello world dot o. Once again, if you don't know what any of the words I'm using mean, then you probably shouldn't be here. Sorry, ld hyphen s hyphen o hello world hello world dot o. Now we have a hello world binary we can use. And if I run this, you see hello world printed to the screen. But it didn't go down a line, so let's just go back into vim and make it so it does that. Now, the character for go down a line is 10, so all we need to do is do comma 10 at the end of hello world. We don't need to change anything else because we've got this msgl variable set up. So, I recompile it and now I run hello world, the hello world program and it runs properly. Now, on a 64-bit computer, as I've just been using the 32-bit syntax, the linking stage is slightly different. You have to do hyphen m e l f underscore i386. But I will have the full way to compile for 64-bit versions and 32-bit versions of this program in the description. Thank you for watching. My name has been Sam. Goodbye.